Hello, I'm Larry Mole Parker. We're back here at the Mole Stage, uh, and we do have a guest, and his name is Bill Krokiger. Uh, Bill is our engineer here at Mole Richardson. He's been here for about, uh, how long, Bill? 25 years? 30? 30 years. 30 years he's been here with us. Today we're going to talk about the 24,000 watt HMI Fresno light, but we're going to talk about the bulb first because I want Bill to go ahead and tell us, you know, about this bulb. And that is a 24,000 watt bulb. Um, it's uh, it's an HMI bulb, and let's, uh, what's HMI stand for, Bill? Well, HMI uh, is a trademark of the Osram Corporation, who developed this back in the in the late 70s. And the uh, H stands for mercury in uh, in German. M stands for medium arc, and the I stands for iodides, which is a uh, rare earth elements that go into the globe to do the color balancing that we that, that needs to be achieved for 5600 degrees Kelvin. Now when you talk about medium arc gap, what do you mean? Are you talking about these electrodes? Yeah, there? we're talking about the electrodes, uh, the arc gap between the, the ends of the electrodes and uh, they call this a medium arc. Uh, in fact, all their HMI line is considered medium arc in, you know, clear down to the, to the 200 watt all the way up to the 24,000. Okay, now here's the big one. How do they make this? Thing? Well, it's a relatively a very complicated process. Uh, each one of these is handmade, and is done by a, by a specialized glass blower. And what this glass is is a what's called quartz glass. And now this quartz glass is a very very pure glass that can withstand temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or even higher. And uh, the way this works out. The way they manufacture this is that they take a quartz tube, but a little bit bigger than this diameter, and they put it with one end into a lathe. A uh, lathe is a, is a device that you clamp down on and it rotates. Okay, and in this lathe, and uh, they have a, a, a hose that comes up from a tank which is filled with helium. And what they do is, the helium is forced down the center of this, and then over here they put a cap on it and the individual, the glass blower, then takes this rubber tube and puts it in his mouth. And what, what he does with that is, is that he pinches it off to regulate the amount of gas flowing through here. So what happens is, is that they set this in the lathe and they have these big torches of hydrogen gas that, it, that blast the center of this, of this uh, quartz tube. Then on the back side over here, they have a, a mandrel of some sort, or a die, or a form that is basically this dome-shaped configuration. Then they also have, at the same time, the guy, the glass blower, also has another device that is similar to this mandrel or guide that he's able to form and push at the same time. Now, what happens is when the torch is getting this red hot, and the, and the and the, he pinches off on, on the tube in his mouth, which then builds up pressure inside here. So when the glass is molten red, this is the weak spot. So now what happens is this starts to, starts to balloon up, and then he sort of forces and helps it form into shape, that shape that is needed to get this, to get the particular shape. And then once he, okay, and once he gets up to that, then what he ends up doing is, is that Somewhere along the line, they, they insert these, the, uh, the ribbons and the, and the tungsten electrodes, okay? And then once the holes are installed, then he heats up the arms also, which in turn then melts up, melt, and then shrinks down around the, around, the, around, the, around the foil and the electrodes. Okay, now once that is done and it formed in the right shape, then they let it cool down gradually. Then in the process, they have a tip-off which allows them to get inside this, this bulb now. Now what they do is, is, once it's all configured and it's all cooled down, they will fill this cavity up with distilled water. And they shake it to get all the bubbles out of it. Now what that distilled water do is going to give them a volume of what's inside this bubble. So then they pour out the, the distilled water and then they weigh it. And then they have some kind of a chart. The uh, engineers that who designed this have a chart. If you have so much volume, okay, look on this chart. 
in the, the, the J tried it to take the number of this volume and relate it to what's on the chart. And once they determine what's on the chart, then they take that from a, from a bin they have already set up. And what they do is, after they dry the inside from the distilled water, they take this, this, this chemicals, which is mercury, and rare earth elements, which are iodides, okay, and they pour it down inside the cavity here. And once it's inside, then they take the torch, a single torch, and they end up capping off this end, which is called the tip-off. And that's basically how they make all these HMIs. Now, the smaller ones they do is somewhat automatic on automatic machines, but on the bigger ones, these are all handcrafted and handmade. Down here at the end, we have, once the, this is all done and done, then we take the end cap and we insert that on here. And meanwhile, this ribbon, this flying lead is called, is then is first attached to the, to the foil, okay, and then the cap's put on. And uh, the, the crucial part about this is, since this is silver soldered onto the, onto the, uh, onto the tungsten, this has to be kept at a certain temperature uh, relative to the, the globe itself. Because if we don't have a, kept at a certain temperature, this junction down here starts to deteriorate quite rapidly, and then we end up, just, the, the pigtail comes out, the flying lead, and then you're in trouble. So that's why our unit is built with these special sockets that has extra heat sink capabilities and our, and our fixture is also ventilated in such a way that we allow more air to come through to keep these things relatively cool. Let me ask a question pertaining to color temperature. How do you maintain color temperature within a certain uh, area? Well, this, uh, this globe is filled with a certain amount of mercury which gives you the blue. And uh, then they add the iodides or the salts or the rare earth elements to bring the temperature, color temperature down to the level of 55 or 5600 degrees Kelvin. All right, the next question is a big one. I notice you're touching it right here. Should yeah. you be doing that? Yeah, this is a no-no by touching with your, with your bare hands because the oils of your hand, fingers, of your hands, will get onto this quartz. And if you put it into a unit and fire it up, this gets so hot that what happens is, is the oils will start eating away into the actual quartz and you can see your fingerprints. And so what has to be done, once this is installed in a fixture, the manufacturer supplies an alcohol wipe. And what you want to do is once it's installed and everything, the flying leads are all attached and the sockets are closed, you take this alcohol wipe and you completely wipe down this surface here and also the arms. Mostly what's important is you do not touch this area because this is the part that, is, that will deteriorate the fastest. The arms are not so critical, but it's still a very good idea to keep it clean. So this bulb right here, that's what, 24,000 watts, right? That's correct. And that's operated off of wood voltage? Well, this, this, this globe is, runs at about 88 to 90 amps, okay, at 272 volts. Okay, but that is, done, that is accomplished by the power supply or the ballast that is connected to this. Okay, Bill, tell me about the, uh, the voltage and the amperage on this bulb. The, uh, this bulb runs between 88 and 90 amps, and the voltage that is uh, set up across this is 272 volts. Next question, warm-up time. Bill, what can you tell me as far as warm-up okay. time? The warm-up time on this, on, on any HMI globe, regardless of what the size is, anywhere from three to five minutes. And that is due from the fact that the mercury has to get ionized, the rare earth elements have to mix and get up to the temperature before everything kicks in. Because at the initial beginning, the color temperature of this bulb is around 15,000 degrees Kelvin. And as it warms up, it drops and drops, and finally at full temperature, which is between three to five minutes, it will come down to 56 to 5,500. Okay, now tell me, I turn it on, it starts to warm up, and all of a sudden we've got to make a move and I turn it off. Is that a no-no? Uh, that is a no-no. Okay. During the warm-up cycle, you do not want to do that. You need to bring it up for at least five minutes and so that, that you have a chance for the chemicals to mix before you turn it off. Last question. Well, one of the last questions. Hot starting. Well, our fixture is designed for hot strikes. Uh, the igniter in there has to put out its full potential voltage, which is around 65,000 volts. And it takes that kind of voltage in order to, to jump the, uh, the, the arc gap between the electrodes. 
uh, it's harder on a globe on a hot strike. So a lot of people let, will, will let the unit cool down before they strike it again. 